Yo, what's going on? Uh, today we got something a little different. We have the Honer Professional B-Base 5. And what am I going to do with it? Actually, it has to do with trying to figure out how to put back Humpty Dumpty. There's an active electronic preamp in this guitar, in this bass. Uh, it came to my friend uh, basically in a part in pieces um, and uh, he wanted to see if we could uh, somehow put it back into functioning form the way it was originally intended. If that sounds interesting to you, stick around. Quick look at the basic parts of the bass. Here it is. Um, what you'll see is that there are EMG pickups in here. Uh, jazz type, jazz J bass type pickups or size. It is a five string bass, hence the name B bass five. Um, see some holes in the control cavity. We'll get to those later. Some smaller holes. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit and tell you basically these two were volume, volume for this pickup, volume for this pickup, and this is where the active electronics went. And quick look at the back. There's the control cavity. Uh, we'll get a closer look. Basically, two non-tap straightforward lines for the pickups. Got a hot lead and a ground for each. I metered them. They seem to work. Uh, let's. Let's take a closer look at the whole thing and what we're up so, against. Here's the stuff that was basically um, that basically came with the base, uh, handed to me. Um, some of the stuff actually, some stuff that I added. I've worked on this the circuit already, but basically we have a couple of pots. We've got uh, obviously the preamp here is in here somehow in case in here. Uh, quick something to point out. One thing right away, in trying to figure out how to rewire this or put Humpty Dumpty back together again, you can see the main part of this board is that long IC in the middle of it. And uh, we're not there yet. I've done some initial testing with some of the work I've done, but uh, at the end of the day, I may go through all of this and figure this all out, how to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, how to wire it up. There's a switch. This is a new LED that I'm going to add. If that IC doesn't work, this is kind of all for naught. But here, just to give you an idea, there's a stereo jack. Actually, there were extra parts that have nothing to do with the guitar that were handed to me. Here's the back plate. Um, just a real quick thing. You can see that this is not only insulating tape or shielding tape. This is actually helps uh, is part of the circuit. This preamp mounts there, and actually those two nuts are part of the ground structure and actually separated on the board, so you need them to have some sort of continuation. Uh, I've um, put some new tape there and done some uh, other things here in the meantime, but that's all part of it. Oops, there's a hole. I just want to point this out. You take a look that there is a trimmer on this board. That's a big clue in how we found out how this thing works. There's a hole through this back panel that allows you to do that. But that's uh, an idea. So um, I'm probably going to go to the handheld camera to get a closer look. And um, my phone is what it is. And I'll show you the start the process. How did I start the process trying to figure out how to wire this? Now let's take a closer look at the parts for the Honer B-Base 5 active circuit. And see what we can figure out. I went online initially to try to see if I can find some information on it. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, but the first thing I did, because the connections on these, a lot of these wires are basically, if you take a look, like this yellow wire right here, which I will be replacing. If you look, it is basically, it's not through the board itself. It is basically a, a, a solder connection, as is the rest of the wires. And thank God, by the way, that the wires that are going to this pot, which is the active circuit control, thankfully are very solid. But as you can see, these things wobble around. There are actually more wires 
attached to this, you can see spots where seemingly there are wires missing. That's because, well, they are now. Um, so the first thing, when you come across something like this, let's see, you can see right here, that connection. The first thing you want to do is take a lot of pictures. So I have some pictures. You want to take video uh, in case any of these wires become disconnected. And they did, by the way, this red wire here is something I added. We'll get to that later. And also make as many diagrams that you can of what you see. So for instance, this switch here, which we'll learn and make sense, is what turns the active preamp, the active circuit on, the boost. Um, there were wires on here. It was, it, someone had been in here and actually, I think what they did is, hopefully it wasn't because something was wrong with the circuit, something else was going on and they rewired this thing and they did it improperly. There was some bad solder joints. So I made a diagram of what color wires, etc., where they went, uh, information that I could. There was a red wire. You can see um, some of the notes I took in addition to pictures. That's really important. But one thing as you approach one of these things, there are some arguably universal things that you can kind of depend on uh, when you look at any kind of circuit. Typically, particularly when you have something that's going to use a 9-volt battery. By the way, there was a 9-volt, seemingly 9-volt circuit. This was the red wire that actually connected here. But um, is that red wires typically are the positive side of the 9-volt battery or through the circuit, the power is supplied there. Typically, the black wires are the ground. And that helped me figure out quite a few things. And looking at the board, you can see where the ground structure is, how that kind of works. And also it will lead you to, and it, and it, it's not universal, but typically the power will come in at one end. There may be a large filter cap to smooth things out further, although this was never seemingly designed to be connected to an outside um, source, uh, just a 9 volt battery nevertheless. And that will lead you to say, okay, well, there's power that has, this has to be powered and it has to be able to have a battery. And also it has to be able, you have to be able to turn it on and off. So as we piece and sleuth this thing together, what we find uh, are, will drive us towards concluding how this works. Also another thing about the active circuit, and since there is a switch that allows the amp to run in passive standard mode and then engage the preamp, then there must be a way to bring a signal from the pickups into the preamp circuit and there must be a place on this circuit that then the louder uh, driven the, the the whole point of this this preamp is to make things louder or, or boost them a way to send that boosted signal back into the or back out of this circuit and where does that go? That's the other thing you think about. So if something comes in, the, the, there is a source for the signal, and those are the pickups. So there is a place somehow that hooks up somewhere to the passive pickups, send, uh, sends that signal to this preamp, which then is boosted, and then out of this is then sent to out to the amp through the jack. So that was the first thing, and that led me to a lot of discoveries, including also another side note is something has to power the LED. The LED was, was, uh, was shot, uh, and I tested a few things. I actually kind of rigged this up where I thought the power went in, the 9 volt and ground, and was able to see that there was another spot in the circuit, and that's where this wire is now that would be a logical spot to tie in an LED or provide power to an LED when the switch is turned on, when the circuit is powered up. And how did I arrive on that is typically 9 volt batteries directly connected to these type of LEDs will burn them out. Uh, they have to have a current limiting 
uh, or voltage drop and current limiting resistor in series with the 9 volt battery. So that's where I started. Putting all that together led me to believe that this end of the circuit, as you can see, there is a resistor there that is connected to a spot where there was a red wire that came in. And then further, it, there's a filter between that spot and the next node, if you will. And that node was somewhere around two volts when I measured it and when I applied the nine volts. I tested that resistor and it made sense. And I was able to actually light this LED properly at this point in the circuit. So this line is something I added because there was a hole through the circuit that will tie in this LED. There's gonna... So another thing here that helped me figure out where what things went was this switch here is a dual throw, dual pole switch. In other words, down this side, this point here, when you flip the switch one way, it connects these two points. When you flip it the other way, it connects these two points. This is an independent switch in a sense. Then a second pole that also does the same thing when you flip the switch. It connects this side one way or another. So in other words, this switch here, when you flip the switch one way, it actually connects these two points, these two points independently of each other. There's no cross between these two sides. So that kind of led me to believe, would also see that, well, there was a ground point that was connected actually to the side of the switch. So now I'm getting somewhere because typically cutting or switching a ground to one place or another kind of turns one side of a circuit or another. And if you look here, there was a line that was cut there was a line that was cut on this other side that switched back and forth. There was a yellow line and a green line that was disconnected, that I disconnected. So some of these things started to tell me, hmm, in here is where, one, the power turns on and off. And then also there is a, this other side is probably the side that connects the, it turns the uh, preamp in and out of the circuit. In other words, on in one way, it would be, quote, the standard passive mode, and switching the other way, it would be the signal would route through the preamp. Those are basic things that would be for any circuit like this. So I'm starting to figure out some things. So one thing that was I was struggling with is trying to figure out what really these devices did is this this, this is, by the way, a dual pot. It is stacked. There are two different pots. So this outside ring turns, if you can see that. And then the inside ring turns independently. And then separately, there are two pots that are basically the same. And in looking at the guitar, I saw no place for a toggle switch of sort that flip back and forth between the two pickups. And I was trying to figure out how this was wired. I had a feeling that this would be the actual volume pots, and then perhaps this would be additional volume, but there were no, no tone controls. I was trying to figure this out, and then I came across a video. And the video showed someone doing a demo of this circuit, of this guitar. And what they clearly showed is that these two pots, or the two higher holes uh, where the pots would go in the, the base, control the volume of each pickup independently. So then I knew that these were basically variable resistors tied directly to the pickups. And then also what he demonstrated was that by turning the outer knob boosted, well, excuse me, when this switch was then flipped in one position, it just acted like a normal passive pickup set with no, seemingly with no tone control. Although I have a feeling that maybe there may be some passive tone control in here because then when he flipped the switch, what it did, these still acted as volume pots. That was another big clue. But the outside ring of this pot boosted the base circuit and then the middle boosted the treble in an active boosting method. So that then kind of led me down the path. I said, okay, then what we have is these are 
connected to the pickups as variable resistors. However, at the point at which the signal comes into these, so at how they're wired as passive uh, res as resistors, as variable resistors, basically the hot lead for the pickup would go to the wiper. And then the this is the other side of the one other side of the pot is attached to ground. And by changing this pot will bleed more of the signal to ground or less. In other words, when it's less, then the signal is stronger. So then I knew if that was the case, these were acted as passive volume controls when that switch was off. Then I knew that when this switch was on, that meant that where the signal coming in from the pickups was here, uh, was brought to these pots, then that signal needed to be brought to this preamp to then be boosted. And going through, just looking through all of this, that led me to believe that the yellow wire, which is here, is attached some through the switch, which then is attached either to the, the pickups and probably all the time, and then it could be switched over then to the, uh, when it's in the other position, it, the circuit is turned on and the signal is then boosted and sent to the jack. Um, I'm being a little cryptic here, sorry. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm not explaining this well, uh, but I'm gonna show you something that will hopefully sort it all out a little bit. The other thing is, is that uh, in the demo that the player showed that how they could put a screwdriver in through the hole of the back panel and access that trimmer pot and boost or lower the actual volume of the boosted circuit. That then led me, that was another big clue, which led me to believe then, just like it is with these, there is uh, this pot somewhere, the, the return signal that goes to the jack, the boosted signal is going to be somewhere located off of one of the legs of this pot. And as we look closer, there was a missing wire there was a white wire that was dangling uh, and if you take a look this pot is connected to ground on one side connected to circle of the other circuit in the other and then this missing pad had nothing connected to it just the trimmer then this tells me this is the signal out from this preamp so after digging and digging around the internet i actually found what is seemingly the layout for this preamp control and how this guitar is wired. It doesn't show what this active control, this is the IC. It doesn't show what that all does or what's going on inside of it. But what it shows is how the pickups are wired in, how the signal of those pickups is sent to the output jack, in other words, to the amp, and how, depending on how the switch is thrown, how that, then that signal, which is, let's just, do this real quick. If you take a look, here is the signal that's coming from the pickups. One side of the pickup is grounded, and here's the signal. It's connected to the wiper of the pot, and depending on how the pot position is, more of the signal appears on this side of the pot, or less, is, or more is blood to ground and the volume is down. But when the volume is completely up, effectively, this pickup is connected to this red line. Follow this red line. It's connected to the other pickup. Here's the back pickup and the, the rear pickup and the front pickup or neck pickup. And then you'll see here that this is not fed directly to the jack. It is fed to the switch. So the signal from the pickups are sent to the switch. From the switch, this is also connected to a yellow wire. Remember how we kind of figured out that that yellow wire is where the signal is input into the boost control, boost circuit, and there it is. So all the time, the entire time, whether the switch is off or in any position, this line is connected into the active circuit control. And you say to yourself, well, then isn't it always on? Well, no, because this may or may not be turned on. Now, there may be a passive tone control through this, because if we follow this, then 
when the switch is in one position, in other words, when it is, it's connected to this side, then the signal from this position is sent to the output jack and goes to the amp. So in other words, you have when the, the switch is in this position and these two points are connected, then you have a passive set of pickups. The signal is sent directly from the pickup to the output jack. However, when you flip this, if you look at this side, that means that this side, this is the output jack. This is the connection of the output jack. This is where everything from this guitar is sent to an amp. This point right here. In one position, it's connected here. However, in the other position, it is connected not directly to the pickups, but to this white line. That's the white, the missing white line that was connected to the trimmer. In other words, let's think this through. If the switch is connecting these two points, it's connecting this white line to the amplifier, sending the signal out to the amplifier, then how is the signal being boosted? How is that happening? Well, what we have, since this is always connected, the pickups are always feeding a signal into the active control. But it isn't until the, the line is switched that the output of the active control is the point is the the signal being sent to the output jack. So switch in one position, it's directly to the pickups passively. In the other position, the signal is actually the boosted signal that's coming out of the preamp. Pretty cool, huh? So then what's on this side? Well, we can see there's that ground line we talked about. So it's grinding to the pickups, to the shield. Uh, there's a ground also to, hmm, interesting. There's three points on this output jack. This is a stereo jack, and we'll talk about how this jack is actually used as a switch of sorts. So if we follow that, we've got black. We've got a ground. These are all ground lines. We have the back of the pot the point at which the signal is dropped to the potentiometer. So that is, by the way, I'll tell you right off the bat, that uh, that is the sleeve point of the stereo jack. Now, on one hand, there's nothing connected. So that means the ground is lifted from that point. Hmm, how does that work? Okay, so let's take a look at the other side of the switch. We just talked about how this side of the switch flipping back and forth sends either a passive, the passive pickup signal to the output jack or in the other position, it actually sends the boosted signal to the output jack, to the amplifier. But what's going on in this side? So as we said earlier, well, this must be the switch to turn everything on and off. Well, let's take a look. We've got a center point here that's tied in. And if we look at the, the switch, you'll see that center point was actually also grounded to the frame, the, uh, the case of the switch. And you'll see that a lot. And it, it helps shielding throughout the amp, uh, without, throughout the guitar. So we have a seemingly a ground line and we can see that it's, the potentiometer ground, the side that needs to be grounded to bleed the signal to attenuate it as you turn the volume up and down. Connect it to the frame of the pots, even the other pot, the dual pot. And as we can see, it is connected to the sleeve of the jack. But wait a minute, there's three connections here. What's going on there? So it's a stereo jack. We're gonna come back to that, how this is, how this functions in the circuit. Well, let's take a look. So we have a ground point. And when the switch is in one position, you can see it's not connected to anything. Well, it is connected through here. It's connected to the sleeve of the jack, which when this is connected to an amplifier, when a plug is inside this jack, it is grounded through the whole system. So the ground is there. But when we flip the switch, we say, oh, well, this must be how this turns on the preamp. But all we really see is that it connects the ground to the uh, the ground side of the LED, huh. which then turns on the LED. But the LED isn't what turns on this IC. So how is the IC turning on? Is it on all the time? Well, we don't want 
the preamp on all the time because it'll just drain your battery. By the way, that's here's where the battery is connected through the circuit. And we just always say, how does that happen? Well, let's take a look at the battery for a second. So the negative side of the battery, the black, is connected to the ring of the output jack, the stereo output jack. Hmm. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look at the difference between a stereo and a mono jack. Let's take a look, instead of the actual jack, let's take a look at the stereo versus mono plugs. Now, I'm going to jump ahead here. Uh, although this jack is a stereo jack, we are not going, this guitar is not to be used with a stereo cord, a stereo plug, but a standard mono guitar cable. So we have the standard mono guitar type cable connector there, and here is the stereo plug. And what you'll see is we have the familiar tip, which connects to one, the center point, point of the jack. And we also see the common sleeve or the larger part here, but in the middle we see what's called the ring. And when this plug is inserted into the jack, this jack has three contact points. One would be for that tip, which generally handles the signal or carries the signal. But there is a separate contact in the middle of this jack that lines up with that ring on the plug and is isolated from those other two contact points. So it allows us to have a third contact point. And that's how a stereo you got left and right tip and ring in a sense. And then there is the common ground, which is part usually of the entire housing. So what's going on here? Let's take a look. So we don't want this preamp on all the time because it'll drain the battery. So how is that battery and how, how is this all, somehow there's something going on with this jack that makes this all work because we looked at the switch here and all the on off in a sense does is direct the signal on one side and then just connect turns on the led that's it so if we look here at the battery this is the negative side of the battery we follow this line and we see lo and behold that the negative side of the battery is connected to the ring point in this stereo jack hmm but we're not using it as a stereo jack. So what's going on here? So what's happening is, imagine if we, instead of inserting a stereo plug, we insert a mono plug into this jack. What it does effectively, it jumps or connects the two contacts, the one contact, imagine the contact inside that jack is to that ring. And the, there's another contact for the sleeve. Now suddenly they are connected. In effect, how this stereo jack is being used is an on-off switch for the preamp because when this the negative side of the battery is lifted and not connected, then it turns off. No current can flow through. There's no voltage applied to the preamp. So this, that's how a sneaky little way, that's how that, that's how that works. So when the plug is in, the preamp is on, independent of the position of the switch. So this will nevertheless eat up batteries, uh, even if you're not using it in a circuit, even if you are not switching it on and off and certainly what as always with any electronic component or any device uh, you do not want to leave this plug in when you're not using it because it will drain the battery because the preamp will be effectively switched on because uh, it is connected the switches the jack itself is functioning as a switch so there you go um i mean that's the overview <laughs> I don't know if that was so well presented, but um, this is how I figured out how this preamp works. Um, I've done some testing and it seems to be okay. At the end of the day, I may put this all together back together again. There's gonna be some squeezing. There's gonna be, I'm gonna rig up this LED so that it is better, better positioned. Uh, let's just take a quick look. If you look in the guitar itself, the spot that the LED goes is over here. Um, it sits in there. It kind of has to be tacked in, but you can see that these leaves are just flying out there. I am going to uh, 
I'm making insulated connectors for these so that it can be brought in and out of the circuit. Also, that's where the switch goes. Uh, another thing to point out, just so you can, the separate thing, uh, you can see this wire. This is the ground wire that is attached to the bridge so that the strings, it helps uh, reduce noise. The strings are grounded. Everything is grounded through the, the guitar into the amp. Um, this was cut short. And so now I've, I've lifted the bridge and put that in there. So I've got to wire this all together now. And also there were missing screws. It's funny, had all kinds of additional parts, but missing others. Um, so all this has got to go back together according to how that is and how we figured it out. And uh, fingers crossed that after all that trouble, that this preamp is actually working, that that integrated circuit is actually functioning so that it will actually boost the signal. Otherwise, we're back to a passive set of pickups.